So when we run electrical current through a wire like this one, what happens is an electromagnetic field, very weak, forms on the outside of this wire. We can wind this wire into a small coil and that will increase the amount of electrical energy produced and stored in this coil when we run electricity through it. Increasing the size of the coil will further increase the amount of electromagnetic energy stored. When we run AC current through this, alternating current, this field will build and collapse with the direction of the current. Also, the strength and the effects of this field will change based off of frequency. This is called reactance. By inserting a magnetic rod into the center of this coil, we can further increase the power of the energy that is stored in this coil. When we use a magnetic rod to increase the strength of our magnetic field, we often lose power at the ends. This is called leakage. In order, to, in order to better control this magnetic field and reduce leakage, we'll often use something like this, toroidal cores, to control the field that is produced when we send energy through this coil. You can see here we have many different types of toroids. These come in different mixes of different compounds. These red ones are powdered iron, and so are these yellow ones. These are ferrite cores. Now all of these cores behave different and they produce different amounts of induction when electricity is built in these magnetic fields. In amateur radio, we can use this inductive field to produce certain electronic qualities that help us design systems. In today's video, we're gonna use these toroidal cores. These are T80 cores, which means they're 0.8 of an inch across in diameter. They're also mix six powdered iron cores, meaning that these cores are made out of powdered iron with some other chemicals or elements mixed in. We're gonna wrap these cores with this Bienteco magnet wire. This is also called enameled copper wire. This is 20 gauge wire that has an enamel insulative coating on the outside of the wire. The magnetic field strength varies with the number of turns of the wire on the particular core. Here we have two cores with eight turns of wire and one core with 25 turns of wire. We're gonna connect these cores up to an induction meter and measure the inductance of these cores and see if they're appropriate for our project. So to measure the inductance of our cores here, we're gonna use this LC meter. And L is for inductance, C is for capacitance. I can switch between my ranges here. And so what I wanna do is I wanna come over here to measure for inductance, and I wanna connect these two together. And what we should get is a value, and you can see it's, it's reading 0.059 microhenries. And I wanna cancel the inductance of these leads out. So what I can do is, now it's at zero, I can come over here and I can hit this. And that basically calibrates accounting for the leads. So let's take a look at one of our cores. And we're gonna look at this one first. This is the one with 25 wraps. And what we want here is 2.8 microhenries. And I doubt that that's what we're going to get right out of the gate. And we're going to have to do some tuning. So let's see what comes back. So it is a little high at 3.07. Now there's a couple of different things that go into making this measurement up. Let's take a look at this core, for example. Uh, what I did is I scraped the ends of these. You can see that we now have bare copper. But the length of these legs or leads can have some reactants in them. So what we do is we trim these, sometimes you lengthen them. Also the number of windings will affect your value. This one has eight. The one under test right now has 25. Also, we can take a look at this and the spacing, let me get this one here a little better. The spacing of the windings will play a role. So if I move these windings around a little bit, you can see my values changing and we're getting closer to where we wanna be. Well, maybe not so much. What I'm gonna do is I am going to take a winding off and then I'm going to trim this leg up and then I'm gonna rescrape it. We're gonna come back and we're gonna do a measurement and see how close we are. Okay, we've taken one winding off and then you can see our inductance is down to 2.99. We want this to be 2.8. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna clip this lead, strip it, and then we're going to see where we are.
Well, that's not exactly what we wanted. Let's see if the spacing, if we can make any adjustments via the spacing. Okay, now we are at 2.69. And remember, we want this to be a little bit higher. And we're getting much, much closer. And that's pretty close, and I think this is where we're going to leave it for now. All right, I know I said I'd leave it alone, but I trimmed the legs just a little bit more. Like here's one of the pieces that I cut off, and I adjusted the spacing, and now we're close to where we want to be. It was 2.8 exactly, now it's 2.801. Uh-oh, now it's going up to 02. But I think this is much better than where we were, and I'm fine leaving it like this for now. Okay, so what we want to do now is we want to connect the eight rat toroids. We have two of them here. Now these should be 0.28 microhenries, not 2.8 like the other one. So let's go ahead and just connect this and see what we see. Okay, so that is a little bit low. And what we do know is we're probably going to trim these legs up a little bit. So maybe if we kind of scooch these things together, we can see what happens. All right, now we're 2.4 something. Let's just keep on doing that. Okay, we're hanging around 2.4. Okay, what I want to do is I'm actually going to do an extra wrap of this. So let me stop the camera and do that. Okay, so we've added an extra wrap here. So now we are at nine. And what we can see is, is that we are a little bit high at this point. So what I want to do is I want to trim the legs and uh, do some more testing. Maybe we'll spread these out a little bit. We scrunched them up earlier. And I think that that had a little bit of an effect. So now we are reading a little low. Let me trim the legs and we'll be right back. Okay, after trimming the legs, we are at 0.29293. And what I want to do is I want to just spread these legs out just a little bit and see if that makes any difference. Let's see what we have now. Uh-oh. We went a little too far the wrong direction. Okay, you can see that these things are pretty fiddly, and uh, we've got it to 0.284, and I think we're going to call that one good. Uh, one of the things I'm going to do is I'm actually going to coat these things with some, uh, what do they call that stuff, heat, heat glue or hot glue to kind of hold everything together, because you can see just very slightly touching that does modify the value. And let's go ahead and put our last one on. And that one's a little low, so we're going to do another wrap, and then we'll see what we have. All right, I'm going to trim the legs now. We'll come right back. Okay, we have the trimmed legs, and let's go ahead and hook this up and see what we see. And look at that, 2.856. And maybe we'll just spread it just a little bit. Watch it go all crazy. <laughs> I should have left well enough alone. Let's go ahead and scrunch it up a little bit. See where we are. All right, to 0.279 is close enough to 0.28 for me. There we go. <laughs> 0.28. All right, what we're gonna do now is we're going to use these in a project. So this is gonna be end of this video. I wanna say thanks for watching everybody. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, please note them below and stay tuned for the build video.